Every day, the believers, men and women, tens of times utter or recite two of the names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. These are two names that we have to recite in every single rak'ah, in every single salah, whether it is one of the daily obligations or an optional salah. Besides the times that people recite them or utter them outside salah. And these two names, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, are extracted from Ar-Rahma, mercy. And they are both intensive forms of Rahma, of mercy. However, Ar-Rahman is more intensive than Ar-Rahim. When the scholars spoke about Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, the two names of Allah Azza wa Jal, they listed few differences between them. They said, for example, that Ar-Rahim is something that is special for the believers and will take place. The mercy will take place on the Day of Judgment. Whilst Ar-Rahman is general, it encompasses believers and disbelievers alike. And the form of Rahmah, of mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal upon the disbelievers is in the form of giving them health, giving them sustenance and so on and so forth. Which is, of course, much less than the mercy of that given to or bestowed upon the believers. Another difference is that Ar-Rahim describes the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal to be ever lasting whilst Ar-Rahman is all encompassing. Ar-Rahim is an attribute of action of Allah Azza wa Jal. Just like anger is an attribute of action. Al-Istiwa rising above the throne is another attribute of action. Whilst Ar-Rahman is an attribute of essence. Just like Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Ali. Al-Azim, the Almighty, the Great, the Exalted, all these are essence of uh, attributes of essence of Allah. Another major difference between these two names is that you can describe a human being or something other than Allah to be Rahim. You can say, so and so is Rahim, merciful. But you cannot, it is not allowed in Islam to say, so and so is Rahman. But you can say he is Rahim. Talking about the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal is heart soothing. It's so comforting. It's so reassuring to the heart. It is so comforting to know that Allah Azza wa Jal took upon Himself to be merciful. Allah says, كَتَبَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ He obliged Himself to be merciful. And not only that, He made His mercy prevail over His wrath and anger. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet وسلم, said, Before Allah had created His creation, He wrote, The scholar said, It's either that Allah Himself, the Almighty, wrote, or commanded the angels to write. He wrote, Rahmati sabaqat ghadabi. My mercy prevails over my wrath. Subhanallah. It gives a lot of hope to know that the mercy we see practiced 
an exercise between the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal is only one part of a hundred. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah created mercy in a hundred parts. He held back 99 and sent down one part by virtue of which people have mercy amongst themselves and even wild beasts where you see a mother raising her hoof lest she might harm her baby. One part is all it took for all of this mercy. And it is distributed amongst mankind, jinn, animals, birds, insects, fish, everything. Only one part. And the 99 that Allah held back, held back for the day of judgment. How merciful will Allah Azza wa be? How can anyone lose hope? How can anyone despair in the mercy of Allah? Allah is so merciful that He is more merciful on me and you than our own mothers. You know, the mercy of the mother, the heart of the mother is something that is difficult to describe with words, the extent of mercy. She is so merciful to the extent that when, when the Prophet ﷺ wanted to make people understand or try to perceive the mercy of Allah, he gave her as an example. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, an incident took place. There were hostages of war, amongst which there was a, a woman who was running right and left, going back and forth, back and forth looking so disturbed, so saddened, until she saw a baby. She grabbed that baby and stuck it to her breast and started breastfeeding and suckling that baby. Now, listen to the following. Dialogue between the Prophet ﷺ and the companions. The Prophet ﷺ turned to the companions and asked, Do you believe, do you think that this mother would throw her baby into fire? The response wasn't, Yes, no, immediately they said, Wallahi, by Allah, she cannot. It's not that, will she or will she not? She cannot. Wallahi la taqdir. She cannot. How can anyone think that she would? Or could? Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Azza wa Jal is more merciful with his slave than this mother is with her baby. And that's why a famous statement said by some of the Salaf, when he was asked about reckoning on the day of judgment and accountability, accountability he said, I would not like or prefer that my mother would be the one who would hold me to account on the Day of Judgment because Allah will be more merciful on me than her. You would think, naturally, one would choose his mother, you know. Who, how can she harm you? She's the mother, described by the Prophet ﷺ the way he did. But they said, no, 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 no. You got it wrong. Allah is more merciful. So I would prefer that Allah holds me to account than my mother would. so soothing to the heart to talk about mercy, the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. 
Well, it gives you, it puts so much hope in the heart. You know, feeling the mercy of Allah is in itself a mercy from Allah. Hoping for the mercy of Allah, having this hope in your heart that Allah will be merciful is another form of mercy. Expecting, thinking good of your Lord, expecting Him to be merciful is yet another form of mercy. And only a deprived, miserable person is the one who doubts the mercy of Allah. We ask Allah's mercy. What are the effects of learning about these two names? What is the impact of understanding, believing in the mercy of Allah? One would be ashamed to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. And if he were to sin, he would hasten to repent. You see, people naturally don't like to be seen by other people in a dispraised position or doing something wrong, right? Well, Allah is worthier, as the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al Imam Abu Dawood and classified as sound by Al Albani. He said, Inna Allah, an minhu min al -nas. Allah is more deserving, Allah is worthier to be bashful or ashamed of than it is with people. You're shy in front of people, you're ashamed to do something wrong in front of people. Well, Allah is worthier, more deserving. Another thing is that it would make a person merciful with others. See, the principal relationship between, believer is, between believers is that they're merciful amongst themselves. As Allah had described them in the Quran, they're merciful amongst themselves when they deal with one another. And only a miserable person who would be stripped of mercy. As the Prophet said, and this is again reported by Abu Dawood, classified as sound by Al-Albani. He said, only a, mer a miserable person whose heart is stripped of mercy. Another effect is that a person would be even merciful towards animals. Why not? Why wouldn't we? When we know that we'll be held accountable for the way we dealt with animals in this life. Didn't the Prophet ﷺ tell us, as in the book of Al-Bukhari, that a prostitute pitied the dog, showed mercy to a dog, and gave him a drink of water, as a result of which Allah admitted her into Jannah? Whilst on the other hand, another woman was stripped of mercy and she held a cat. She captured her in a room, depriving her from food or allowing her to go out and feed herself. And as a result, Allah threw her into the fire of hell. Love. How can you not love Allah when you know that he is so merciful. By nature, mankind have this tendency or inclination to love and appreciate those who are kind and nice to them. When, some, when someone does you a favor, you feel obliged, you feel that he deserves to be treated well, he deserved. Well, all of this mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal forces His love into our hearts. When you think of the extent 
of mercy Allah Azza wa Jal has and will have. And finally, hope. How can you not have hope in Allah Azza wa Jal and His pardon when you know how merciful He is? Al Izz ibn Abd al Salam, may Allah have mercy on him, said, When one thinks of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, he will not help but have hope in Allah Azza wa You want to know how much hope a person will have when he sees or realizes or hears of the mercy of Allah? It is so much to the extent that a disbeliever will still have hope in Allah's mercy. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet wasallam said, and listen to this. He said, if, a, if the disbeliever knows how much Allah Azza wa Jal's mercy is, he will have hope that on the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal will be merciful with him. A disbeliever. How should our situation be? However, and with this I conclude. We need to remember that Allah Azza wa Jal said, Inna rahmatallahi qareebun minal muhsineen. The mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal is near to those who are muhsineen. Al muhsin is a person who is pious, who adheres. When he deviates, he hastens to go back. That's why Al-Qurtubi said, it shows lack of manners with Allah Azza wa Jal. When someone intentionally sins under the pretext of Allah is merciful. Yes, we're fallible, we make mistakes. But don't continue to do so under the pretext and justify your, your sin by saying, oh Allah is merciful. Because Allah is, Azza wa Jal is also severe in His punishment. We ask Allah's mercy. Allahumma ya Rahman al-Samawati wal-Ard wa Rahimahuma. Allahumma firlana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit al-Qadamana wa sirna ala al-Qawmi al-Kafirin.